as we come to the close of 2023 and look forward to a new year, I wanted to share some highlights from a book that I read, and it's The Habits of Joy-Filled People. So, let's get started. Building spirituality, family, health, and business. This is The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. I would love to ask you to help us out by subscribing, like, share on social media, and comment on the YouTube channel. And that helps us get noticed and more people reached through our podcast. So as I was preparing the schedule last October, um, I left a specific space open for this episode. And I was I wanted to share something. I didn't know what it was, but as the year came to a close, I knew that I wanted to share something. And so I prayed about it and for a topic that would be inspiring or some way of closing out 2023. And so in November, I joined a Bible study at my church, in which case they were studying the four habits of joyful people. And it was like, oh, well, you know, my dad used to say sometimes God needs to hit us with a two by four to get us to pay attention, but that definitely did not need to be I did not need to be hit by two by four and knowing that this is the book that I knew that God wanted me to share with you at the end of 2023 and as we start a new year. And in case you're not listening to this at the end of 2023, maybe this will be a good thing for you, maybe the beginning of a quarter or the beginning of a month or maybe as you start a new week or as you start a new day. I think that this book has some great information in it that can help you become more joy-filled. So um, so I don't want to read the book to you. I don't want to do an outline of the book. I want to share with you some points that were kind of like, ah, I need to note that. Just some things that kind of really inspired me to know that this was the book that God wanted me to share with you. So, To start with, there's two authors. One of them actually is from Indiana and actually pastored a church in Carmel, Indiana, which was, is where I live and have lived for over 30 years where my children were all raised and went to high school. So it kind of had a passion there with him mentioning a couple of times about being in Carmel. Um, So, and then also one of the ladies in our Bible study, she actually, knows his family and him. So that was kind of inspiring as like, she shared a couple of stories about him and his family. So that was kind of neat. But like I said, I only want to highlight the book and things that kind of stuck out to me. And um, just, I think that God would want us to use the wisdom of this book differently for each of us. So I want to highlight things. And then I really want to encourage you um, to get the book to know how God wants you to be joy-filled as your individual person. So as we look into this book, um, I found it interesting that they use a lot of areas where they use the first letter of the things they want us to remember to spell to spell words. And so the first word that really stuck out for me was casa. C-A-S-A, which if you do or do not know, that's Spanish word for house, which is very interesting because as we look at house and joy field, I think as general people, we would like for our our home, our where we raise our family to be joy filled. But I also believe that God wants our bodily house, you know, the house of the spirit to also be joy-filled. And I think that's even more important than having a home that's joy-filled because if you are personally joy-filled, then it's gonna be easier for you to have a house that's joy-filled, but also to teach the people in your house how to be joy-filled. So let's just look over CASA. So C stands for calming and starting with the art of living with a quiet mind. You know, in the hustle and bustle of life today, finding moments of calmness is very unique and it's very transformative. So 
it's very interesting how he teaches calming. And the interesting thing is that with each of these habits, they have like these little exercises that you can do. So you could put it into practice. And the whole concept is to make it a habit, okay? something that your body like normally does. So like there's so many things that our body does that we don't think about, you know, breathing, blinking, and creating joy feel could become one of those things that you don't have to think about because your body just naturally does it. Appreciating, um, about finding joy in life's everyday pleasures. It's the small things, you know, like a warm cup of tea, um, a beautiful sunrise, sunrises always bring me joy. The laughter of a friend or even just the laughter of a child just brings so much joy. And so that is appreciating. Storytelling is the S and not the kind like with dragons and wizards, but the narrative, not only that we tell ourselves, but how we tell stories to other people and how we create these stories to impact our lives and the people around us. So just in the kind of in the darkest moments when we are telling ourselves these gloom and doom stories, we can change those stories. And again, it's a habit that we need. And then the A stands for attacking toxic thoughts. So attacking toxic thoughts is like a superhero strategy of our minds, you know, replacing those imprisoning thoughts in our mind and liberating them. The book also shares some myths about joy, which I found very interesting because I, I think that we really do lean on these myths. And one of them is joy isn't just a choice. It's a process of training our brain. And he goes through this whole process of the left brain and the right brain and how they interact and how they create joy and what you need to do and think and create the habit of training your your brain to see joy. So um, joy-filled individuals aren't magically born. And I know you have people in your life, because I do too, but there's people in my life that seem like they're always joyful. And that's not, and that's not because they were born that way. But it's probably because in their household, their family created habits that created that joy. And you're never too old to change your habits. And so becoming a joyful person is a process of learning how to create those habits. Maybe as those of your friends who are always joyful learn those habits as children. And here's a revelation. Joy-filled people have fewer problems, and that's not true. Joy-filled people have just as many problems as everybody does, but they've mastered a process of facing those challenges joyfully and looking at those challenges in a joyful way. So in the process of the book, it actually takes each of these habits, if you will, and creates a whole chapter on it, and it really goes in deep as far as some of the sections will talk about how the brain works with it. Some of them talk about how we ourselves can interact with people and things and just really, again, create those habits that create a joyful, filled life. So there's also a process I found interesting. He calls it the joy game. So not like, again, using the letters G-A-M-E to help us to remember this process. So it's not like a video game, but it's um, four powers that you can use to harness the concept of joy. So they are gratitude, always looking for things to be grateful for, anticipation, and changing your anticipation of a situation so that you know, sometimes our anticipation are always negative things. You know, like, for example, my husband going to the airport, he always pictures us missing the flight, being in long lines, our luggage getting lost. I mean, it's it's torture <laughs> to travel with him by plane because he's already pictured all these the negative things that could happen. Whereas anticipating good things like, okay, we're gonna get to the airport on time. We're going to make our flight. The luggage isn't gonna be lost, you know, and that type of thing. So your anticipation of situations. And again, this is a habit that you can train your brain. Memories, just soaking in on memories that bring joy is a good way 
of the bringing out the joy field and then experiences um, just looking at experiences as you go and finding the joy in those experiences i've also found it interesting that he talks about our emotional journey and he actually puts it in a very understandable process because he puts it in like a process of how we grow as humans so he has the infant emotional maturity the child the adult the parent and the elder and it was an interesting conversation in our bible studies we talked about how we felt which category we felt we were in which category we would like to be in we talked about certain people that we knew were in different categories and so that was just a whole interesting conversation so it'd be really fun if you got a group together and actually went through this book with either a group of friends or a group of family members that would be awesome too he also introduces us to our protector emotions and these are things that we do or pull out to protect ourselves when we are not feeling joy filled and it's they are these are these are sad things and i know we all pull on these but they're shame anger disgust sadness fear and despair but understanding these emotions can help us navigate sometimes when we're in those really rough waters and help us to understand our feelings and direct us more towards joy so like i said we're starting a new year as i'm recording this and my prayer is that you might check out this book um, it's not a real expensive book. I think it was like $13 on Amazon. I'll, I'll leave a link below so that you can get easy access to it. But let's embrace joy-filled perspective as we start our year. Maybe just as a daily practice, just creating habits that will turn each week and each month in the year into cultivating joy. So I thank you so much. I want to say that I appreciate the fact that I'm closing the year 2023 with you and that I look forward to just sharing so many more ideas and guests with you. And um, please keep in mind that we have two new pages to our website, thegiantbuilders.com. You can find a media page where we'll be sharing links to books that people our guests have shared with us and also a sponsor page. So I wish to you a happy new year if you're looking at this at the end of 2023. A happy month if you're in the beginning or middle of the month, or even just a happy week or a happy day. May God bless your journey. See you next week. Thank you for listening. This has been The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. <laughs>